see. Am I on? Okay. Hey, I'm on. All right, so um, I believe we left off on VB9. Yes? Okay. Wonderful. That's why we'll begin. <laughs> We'll start over. Okay, so, um, yeah, we stand as the Christ at all times, with the Christ as the Christ. So, yeah, we got up to the fixer. It's kind of funny. That's where it stopped, huh? Okay, so, the Victim Victimizer 9 is the I Destroy You stance, which, by the way, <laughs> we just passed through uh, today. Um, so, on, on the, in the larger cycles of time, so we have the bully as the aggressor, and the bully can turn into the psychopath, right, if the fixer stays engaged. The target is the fixer. Basically, what I was saying is that the target is more, you know, kind of like the Azerites, who, who are the ultimate fixers, and coming back and thinking that they can fix things and holding the host. And we have to realize that sometimes people, things, universes, sometimes don't want to be fixed, right? So the objective is victim confusion. Covert control via reverse mirroring. So the fixers are um, people who keep coming back to fix a problem. You just keep showing up, you keep getting up, you keep standing up. And at the core of that, the reason that you keep doing it is, is because you love the person or you love the race. But it's also a love that can infringe on free will. No matter how good the intentions of a fixer might be, sometimes you have to accept that certain beings or people or relationships don't want fixing. Eventually, throwing love at someone, particularly unconditional love, basically saying, I love you no matter what, is a great space to be in. But if you're dealing with someone who's trapped in the aggressor pattern because you're not saying, oh, it's my fault, and you know, I'm not going to let you manipulate me anymore. You're basically saying, I'm going to stick around, and we're going to talk about this, because this has to be fixed. You're not going to walk over me, all, walk all over me, but I love you, and I'm not going to leave you either. So when you get to that point, if you can get to that point, you may find that it might help the other person that's been running the pattern to step aside a bit, right? Because all of a sudden, hmm, that didn't work anymore. They're not buying it. They're not feeling guilty anymore. Uh, they're not doing what I want them to do. It's not working. So it might get them to shift a bit because you haven't gone away and abandoned them, but you're also not letting them walk all over you. So it's a really interesting spot for the target pattern to be, particularly if there's field interference that has a contract on you or something. The person themselves may not want to hurt a hair on your head ever. But when this pattern pops, there's so much energy and so many keys collect behind it as far as frequency goes. Remember, this is collecting keys or pieces of keys when you engage in the games, when you're hooked into the sexton clock. It's collecting your crystals out of your body as it runs, pulling them into the metatronic configuration. So it's going to pop. When you hit these spaces, once it moves to VV9, you get a blast of frequency that comes in, amplifies the pattern strongly, where you start the mirroring, and it gets really nuts. Who's mirroring who? You don't know who is right. You don't know who, who is wrong. You don't know who's on first. It exhausts the heck out of your energy. And meanwhile, you're getting keys harnessed at a more rapid rate. But sometimes these arguments are cover-ups for something else. In these engagements, any engagement when people are talking with each other or arguing with each other, just like when you make love with a partner, there is energy being swapped. When you get into these programs, you are actually ricocheting energy back and forth off each other, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, just like the pendulum swinging, gra gathering keys. You're building charge, and you're building charge on a negative, a negative reverse current that's bouncing off each other that keeps reversing because one is sender, sending energy out and the other one is rebutting it and it's bouncing back and forth. And the more emotion you get involved and the angrier you get with each other, the more key emissions or pieces of key emissions, light emissions, you are generating. And guess what, where those are going? 
Those are going to feed the Metatronic reversed spiral. Same thing with arguments. It doesn't mean never argue again. That's not going to work because it's even worse to hold it in. You need to find a balance, a balance between how much you're going to let come out of your mouth and when you're going to cover your mouth <laughs> and take it elsewhere before your elementals decide for you what's going to come out of your mouth, something that you may really regret. So step back, take a cleansing breath, disengage, and say, I have no argument with you. Blow out the breath and get rid of the charge on the energy because the bully role can go into the psychopath if the fixer stays engaged. But the flip side of that is it can also go into, sci into a psychopath if the fixer starts to leave. So that's why you need to find some balance. Okay, so to review these nine stages that we had a very interesting time getting through as far as um, getting the sound to work. These are all designed to make you think that you need someone to be safe, to be loved, to be liked, to be successful, etc when all you really need is to recognize and embrace the limitless gift of God's source which moves through you in every moment. The buddy who pretends to be your friend and makes you believe you need them to feel safe moves to the baby who wants you to believe they are powerless without you, playing on your ego to get control of your energy, moves to the hero savior that wants to do everything for you because they want you to think that you don't know how to do it so they can still control your energy by disempowering you. And that moves to the terrorist, which controls by direct, overt, direct intimidation to control your energy through fear and disorientation. That moves to the possum that pretends that the problem is all gone to get you to let down your boundaries so that the snake can strike and blindside you. And then the martyr kicks in, making it look like you did what they're doing. And this escalates to the magician with the mirrors flipping back and forth. You don't know who's on first. You're so confused. And then that moves to the bully, where I destroy you stance can turn psychopathic. What a game. There's more. Let's learn about element three. Element three can have all sorts of fun with itself and really mess with your relationships, your head, by attaching to both fields and playing these victim-victimizer roles back and forth. If you have FA fluences, FA influences in your elements, which most people do that are on planet Earth, pushing your chemicals around, you actually start having their arguments, and you can get lost and glazed in the process. You get caught with a wave of emotion, they will get all heated, and all of a sudden your body is really angry and you're caught in your body, and you feel angry too, and you don't really have the mental space anymore to stop and think, what am I angry about? What am I doing? What is this all about? You get a wave coming through, and when it's pushed by the F days attached to your field, you can become like dueling banjos with the person you are closest to, even when these influences are playing. Is it you? Is it me? Or is it element three? If you can't figure out what you are doing wrong, and you can't figure out what they're doing wrong either. If you stop doing it, you can shift the conversation into a good space instead of flinging nonsense at each other. Element three will try to play you both, like one moving both characters, like little kids who like to play with dolls, right? If element three has an agenda, for example, with a person in a crowd situation, if there's a target that is causing a problem for the FA collective that element three is connected to, and that they have put a contract on whacking that person astrally, they will actually try to attach to people that that person engages with in order to cause harm through them. The trick to figure out, is it you, is it me, or is it element three, is to stop and realize, no, I am not doing that. You can tell them that, and they will argue with you. If someone's trying to engage you in that pattern, or saying that you're doing something when you're not, just say to yourself, wait a minute, I'm being accused of something that I'm not actually doing, and the person who is accusing me really thinks I am. Hmm. So you don't get mad at them for accusing you either. You realize you have an element problem. 
your fields are having an element problem together. So one thing that the beloved taught speaker one, and that was shared with us, that seems to work very well in certain circumstances, is to say, I have no argument with you, and disengage in a kind and loving way to break the pattern and mean it sincerely. Even though you might not like the behavior that is being thrown at you, and you can find yourself throwing in response, somebody has got to do the wake-up call within themselves. Somebody has to say, wait a minute, this is getting nowhere. Don't throw accus accusations and names at other people and blame the other person. What you simply can do is step back, take a deep breath, disengage, and say, I have no argument with you, because you really don't. It's not their fault either. They're trapped in a pattern just like you are. And you can help both of you by coming from the us perspective instead of a me perspective, right? If someone is out of control, even momentarily with their words and their behavior, their core intention is not coming through. They're having patterns come up with their elements, and you can have help with your elements too. So if you can learn not to get flattened by people who are playing the aggressor role without meaning to, because it runs subconsciously, you can learn to hold your power better, and you will help people that are stuck in the aggressor role move out of it, and they will no longer respond in the same way. So depersonalize yourself from it and say, I have no argument with you. We always have a choice whether or not to engage in the VV drama. When we choose to engage the game, we can be used as walking, talking amplifiers and providers of metatronic sextant keys to feed the antichristic agenda. Choose to embody the ANRs and avoid engaging in the victim-victimizer game. So we're, we're running a little late. I hope that's okay. I have some more um, stuff to do here. Um, environmental factors. We're going to discuss briefly shadow-related blockages, psychotronics, who is driving your bus, the cal force, and the masks. So shadow-related blockages compromise day-to-day -day and longer-term personal frequency management. And shadow-related blockages reflect struggles with duality across all planes of consciousness. So there, the way to heal the shadow body is not to get rid of it, but is to integrate it. So we heal the shadow body, and then we integrate the shadow body. And the link can be found on the bottom of the slide here. And there is also a linguistic template reprogramming grid, which is called the Shadow Healing LTR grid. Okay, so we'll move on to the next one. Psychotronics. Psychotronics are like wearing a diving suit every day. This is a completely different feeling <laughs> pattern from a miasm. It feels like you've got lead running through your veins. Great for you for disengaging. <laughs> so one of the things the Victim Victimizer program does is that it generates all sorts of reasons for us to identify with things that are not good for us, right? If you're in a place where psychotronics are making you ill, it's time to rethink where you are living, what relationship you're in, and, and move. Move through it if you have to. Move, move your home if you have to. If you can stand outside of yourself for six minutes and look back at the person that you see as yourself and the things that it's going through in order to maintain certain conveniences and certain appearances, not one of them has anything to do with what is supporting us and where we want to go. We all do it. We do it with jobs. We do the job that ticks us off so deeply, we wonder how we manage to go there every day. The Victim Victimizer Game Program is a holographic loop that feeds your insecurity. It feeds your fear. It feeds your need to be the biggest, the bestest, and the smartest, etc. So, is it you? Is your emotional body driving your bus? It's a lousy driver, guys. Is someone else driving your bus? Is the net driving your bus. What is the net? The net is the Niberian electrostatic transduction field. And the net is created to make you feel separate, to make you feel weak and incapable, and to make you feel less than, to make you feel unattractive. And the codes of behavior to move through this are the attitudes and responsibility of, ha of mastery to keep us centered. To they keep the savior, the martyr, the victim-victimizer programs from driving the bus. 
They keep the ego in check, and they help us figure out what is truly divine guidance and what is not. Can psychotronics. Psychotronics are pulse, little pulses of energy that come through the planetary grids that are disharmonic to your own energy fields. Okay, and they they're usually um, targeted biologically. Okay, I hope that that helps. I can answer some more of it when I uh, when I do the email. Okay, the first step in receiving divine guidance is to accept yourself just the way you are. The tricky part is allowing yourself to recognize who you truly are. So Kale Force programming. So what is the Kale Force? The Kale Force is a chemical force in the body, and on that chemical force lies the ability to program holographic inserts. And holographic inserts are things that you experience through your DNA that are as if you are living them. Okay, but they're they're designed again to harness your keys. So instead, what we do is we find the you that is at the core of all the scripts and symbol dramas that are in your body pattern. Okay? The Cal Force starts with little things which make you see somebody acting like an enemy to you. They're actually not. Where you find yourself reacting to people, you're actually throwing energy back at them because you felt them throw energy at you. But they're actually didn't throw energy at, from you at all. It came from somewhere else. Where did it come from? came from the kickback in your own fields, from your own CalForce program. The victim victimizer has many faces, right? It can go between races of people that have certain creeds that are different from each other, or it can go between two individuals trying to have a relationship, particularly if they are male or female. There's a lot of that programming. In our subconscious filters, which is a part of the Cal CalForce, there are literal programming patterns. And these were not by accident, by the way. They were on purpose to make sure that conflict as opposed to harmony. Instead of having a nice energy flow, you would get static and you would get power buildup where you would end up in a power struggle. We are fighting these within ourselves. When you see it in relationships and victim-victimizer drama, where you may be playing the passive victim and surprise yourself to death because if you realize that if you push a passive victim enough, they will turn into a victimizer, and they can hit just as hard, and sometimes harder than the other. So if we can stop ourselves um, from doing this, it's not going to happen overnight, obviously. What we are learning is to realize that we have a set of subconscious forces that have been running amok and directing our emotional response patterns as well as mental response patterns. This is just how the human condition is. So we adopt all types of behaviors, all types of masks. We don't show our true self. The masks of how you should be and must be eventually become the mask that you know as your true self. So earlier I said we would talk about the solution to the victim-victimizer game. And this is just something that I put together to hopefully uh, exemplify that. So we have the victim-victimizer game program. And the solution to the victim victimizer program is personal power mastery and relearning the lessons of unconditional love and appropriate Christiak power mastery. When we remember this, we can experience Christic knowing, innocence of the original first creation. When we forget this, we become trapped in the manifest illusion. The CalForce program information is from the Etherdown Awaking of Morocco 2005. Um, Nunu, I believe I gave you a link for that. Would you kindly post that? Thank you. Okay. So other solutions are, you know, you can fill in the blank. You made me feel blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Everybody can fill in the blank their own way, right? But the solution is to own it, and then you can heal it. You cannot heal it if you don't own it. And by owning it, you're learning how to direct your personal energies towards the outcome that you desire. Okay? So you can ask yourself, is there anything that I'm not owning right now that I need to? Or is there anything that I'm not owning or that I am owning that isn't mine? No one can make you do or feel anything unless you give them permission. 
on some level. You're welcome, Michael. <coughs> So we have to integrate and balance all the frequencies in our fields and our shields to their positive expression. You are most welcome. And to find our authentic self and never settle for anything less. Ah, and here's the source slide. Um, the Etherdown Awakening Morocco, May 2005, was the Cal Force programming. Sacred Sexuality and the Arts of Divine Relationship, Part 3, was the major part of this program. Festival of Light was where I got the information on the history. The Open Letter was the information and quote on blame. The Cathara Bio Spiritual Healing System, Level 1 Manual, was where um, I used the quote from The Illusion of Martyrdom. And the attitudes and responsibilities of mastery were from the website. Of course, those are also in the Cathara One manual. And of course, life on 3441 planet Earth. So there is something called the fight or flight um, response. Now, I was going to take us through a technique, but I need permission to go beyond. Is that OK, Nunu? Do we have that? And do we have everybody else's permission to do that? Okay, Nunu, do, can we do that? Yes, from my side. Okay, great. All right, so promise will be done by 1030. Okay, so fight or flight. Emotion equals energy in motion. Air traffic control of the self is no longer in the multidimensional hands of the office of the Christos, but in the 3D biological hypothalamus and midbrain, the palomammalian fight or flight department the chemical hormonal driver of the D2 emotional body, theater of the victim, victimizer drama. So there's a technique that we're going to do. It's the fight or flight technique, and this is just an overview. We're going to run the Mahark quick seal. We're going to scan for disharmonic energies, which are areas that feel tight or blocked or constricted or hot or cold or prickly or uncomfortable. We're going to notice which chakra tension is closest to. So I have a diagram on the right-hand side that I will leave up during the technique for you so you can see your sh the chakra's location. We're going to bring Mahark current into the chakra closest to the tension zone and make a pale silver Maharata ball. Then we're going to breathe the energy from the tension zone into the Maharata ball. When we complete that, we're going to send the Maharak Mahark ball down to chakra 13 at Earth core. And then we're going to draw the Mahara ball, still holding the disharmonic energy, up to Shaka 14 and out the top of the head. Now, I have a question. Is there a any newcomers here? Is this anybody's first introduction to these teachings on this webinar this evening? Ah, that's a no. OK, so instead of running the Mahara quick seal, I think what we'll do is we will expand our Christar vehicle. We will induce the Aluri Rashatan, and then we'll make our Maharg ball. A Maharg ball is the pale silver Mahara ball in whatever chakra that you feel. So why doesn't everybody just take a quick two or three minute um, comfort break, and then we'll come back, and I will run the fight or flight technique. Oh, you're a beginner. OK. All right. Um, well. Then we'll do the Mahar Quick Seal, but we're still going to take a two or three minute break for everybody to get comfortable. Okay?
see. Thank you, Michael. Is um, Jessica here, Jessica, that I would be doing the Mahar Quick Seal for? Are you back, Jessica? Yes, okay, so I believe it's been two minutes, so we are going to, I'm going to leave this up on the screen so that you can see the chakra uh, when we do the technique, but I'm going to flip forward um, for Jessica because we're going to do the Mahar Quick Seal. Okay. Um, in the technique, it says you can work with a 24-pointed star, which you can do, or you can work with the Akasha on the screen, whichever you so choose, whichever feels right to you. So we will begin the Mahar Quick Seal. Work with a 24-pointed, three-dimensional star, and be aware that you will be working with the beings known as the Branau Rishi. Nice. You can also use the Hierophant here on the screen, the Akasha. Begin by slowing your breathing as you imagine or visualize a 24-point, three-dimensional hierophant at the pineal gland in the center of your brain. Visualize the hierophant surrounded by a pale blue sphere of light. The blue sphere serves as a buffer for your readiness to accept the frequencies associated with the 24-pointed star. The blue sphere holds the energy for you until your body can handle the energy. If you can handle it, the energy will simply pass through the blue sphere. Now, take an inhale breath as if you're going to grab the blue sphere containing the 24-point star located at the pineal, and exhale and move it down the 24-point star and blue sphere into Earth's core. Try to hear a sound tone as the Hierophant sphere hits the planetary shield. Inhale and draw the Hierophant sphere up to your personal Maharic shield 12 inches below your feet and exhale while watching the pale silver blue sphere expand out to a large sphere and watch as your Maharic shield pops out as a disc about four feet in diameter, pale silver with a light coating of pale blue. It's a beautiful image. Bring your attention to the center of your Maharic shield 12 inches below your feet and inhale the 24 points there only up into the heart chakra. And then exhale, expanding the frequencies of the 24-point star into the heart chakra. Now, inhale to grab the 24-point star. And exhale, it, pushing it all the way up to the 14th chakra, which is 36 inches above your head. Imagine the 24-point star is spinning in a clockwise direction in the 14th chakra. And as you do this, try to feel and sense the energy around you just a few inches out from your body. Now, put your attention into your Maharg shield 12 inches below your feet. Take a couple of relaxing breaths and inhale deeply, pulling the pale silver and blue energy up as if you are pulling on your Maharg seal to latch it onto your 14th chakra. Try and feel the sensations just a few inches from your body now. This procedure gives you a quick seal. Now, envision the cord of pale silver Maharic light that would normally come up with your shield and focus on the Earth's core. Begin drawing energy all the way up the 4-inch diameter cord and into your body. Inhale the energy up into the heart center and expand it there. Begin to form a pale silver ball of Maharic frequency. And on each exhale, send your energy down to the Earth core. Bring up another load of Maharic frequency from the planetary shield Expand it into the heart center and repeat this several times. So repeat this several times and notice as the cord is growing larger and larger as you do this, expanding from approximately 4 inches to 6 inches to 8 inches in diameter until finally it feels like a skin around as well as within your body as you load your astral field with Maharic frequency. Now move your attention to the pale silver ball you've created in your heart center. Inhale and move it up to the 14th chakra, 36 inches above your head. As you do, feel for the sheath of Maharic frequency encasing your etheric body close to your skin. This Maharic crystal skin charges and saturates your etheric body. Feel the peacefulness and all-knowing nature of this frequency. Okay, and we'll do the Vasha Era Christ Star now. 
So you're going to inhale and squeeze at your iumbi, which is just below your second chakra, below your navel there. Russia, and then up to the Azure. Ira, up to the third eye, sixth chakra. Pry start and expand out and say now. Now. Okay, we'll do that two more times. Russia. Ira. Pry star. Now. And one more time. Russia. Ira. Pry star. Now. All right, so now let's, let's learn a little bit about mastering fight or flight. Okay. So the fight or flight response is a condition of physiological subconscious reaction to energy fields that are disharmonic to the energy fields of the body. DNA template distortions caused by the Niberian dyadic crystal grids, which are um, fallen angelic templates in the planetary grid system, amplify this bioresponse mechanism to extremes, generating fear, apprehension, depression, reactionary anger, and a variety of other unpleasant bio-emotional responses into conscious awareness. If we can realize that the quality called emotion is the result of natural embodied energy sensing mechanics that are tuned to the environment, we can learn to tune into a new set of chosen response patterns beyond the subliminal programming of the Niberian Dyadic Crystal Grids and contemporary cultural response patterns. Emotion is emotion equals energy in motion, and we can learn to create more enjoyable experiences of emotion and sensation by approaching these qualities as energy, with energy. We have the innate power to override and reprogram our fight or flight response by effective direction of internal energy fields. So everybody just to take it up little time to relax your body, close your eyes, begin to notice where the physical body is holding tension, fear, anger, worry, guilt, shame, etc. Or areas that feel tight, blocked, constricted, hot, cold, prickly, or uncomfortable. Scan this tension zone area of the body, attempting to gain an image of the disharmonic energy pattern that is causing the discomfort. And as you scan it, notice which of the seven embodied chakras is closest to the tension zone. The chakra number will give an indication as to which dimensional band the tension zone is emerging from. Okay, now bring pale silver Maharata current up from Earth's core, and you can bring Asayas orbs if you're working with those frequencies, up from Earth's core through a pale silver cord to the chakra closest to that tension zone, and make a pale silver Maharata ball in the center of the chakra, where the point of the chakra cone intersects with the central vertical current of the body. This is the location of the seed crystal seal that holds the chakra into manifestation and which connects directly to the Kathara center and DNA strand template that corresponds to the chakra. Now, focus on the disharmonic quantity of energy in the area of the tension zone. And with each inhale, draw this energy quantity from the tension zone into the pale silver Maharata ball at the center of the designated chakra. Once most of all the disharmonic energy quantity is drawn from the tension zone into the chakra. Exhale forcefully, pushing the Maharata ball, di holding the disharmonic energy rapidly down to chakra 13 in Earth's core. Now, do that and then inhale forcefully, drawing the Maharata ball, still holding the disharmonic energy up the central vertical current from Earth's core all the way up out the top of the head to chakra 14, 36 inches above your head. The D13 and the D14 blue and gold flame key Rache current subharmonics of chakras 13 and 14 will transmute the energy into a naturally harmonic pattern. 
Repeat steps four to seven until you feel relief from the disharmonic energy and the release of the tension zone. Once the tension zone is released, you can further investigate the cause of the disharmonic energy by observing the chakra number and scanning the body in the region where the tension zone existed at the dimension number frequency band corresponding to the chakra number. Use the color frequency of that dimension to locate the appropriate frequency bands for scanning. Okay, and you can find those in Cathara 1, uh, Level 1 Manual. So, just take your time, come back to the virtual classroom <laughs> in your own time. Hopefully, I have given you enough information from the freedom teachings themselves that will assist you to recognize, own, and heal the victim-victimizer game and programs within yourself. Is everybody back from the meditation? Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. I had actually had a wonderful time putting this webinar together. Um, it was a lot of work, as, as you can tell. But boy, you know, when when you start working with the frequencies, something happened to me. You know, this is a little personal. Something happened where I actually had my own personal shift, and and felt this huge cleansing. And um, it was all for just from creating this presentation so that I could share my passion for healing, you know, with everybody who wanted to, to hear what I had to say. So um, thank you once again to, to the guardians and to the speakers and, and to everybody who's playing in this big sandbox with me. Let, let's heal this mess and let's go home. What do you say? Yeah, okay, right on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Everyone is co-creating this experience tonight, so thank you very much. And may you have pleasant dreams this evening. And so it is, yes. Daeja and Tadoe. Daeja and Tadoe. Daeja and Tadoe. Absolutely. <laughs>